Yes, I'm Carol Edmondson and I am located in the UK. I am retired now, a retiree. However, I do more now as a retiree than I did when I was in the employed field. Hello and welcome to Obehi Podcast. I'm your host, Obehi Ewan And I strongly believe that everyone has a story to share. Now let's get started with this episode. Forty-five year career, and when I took voluntary redundancy early retirement back in 2016, I thought that was it. But you know, there were other plans. Um, through ill health, um, I suffered with a chronic uh, situation for nine years, and then in 2017, my husband was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and that got me on the natural health path looking at alternative protocols for cancer. Um, So that's what got me onto that side of things. And I, myself, when I said I suffered with a debilitating condition for nine years, it was very debilitating. I was not able to work for two months and I couldn't plan my weekends from one weekend to the other because I didn't know whether I'd be able to get out of bed. So that was something that taught me to listen to my body because I, I'm i not, a, this was more than just a cold. I was on the brink of pneumonia, which broke down my immune system. So I say to anybody these days, listen to your body. It's the only one you have to live in. And, you know, don't be like me. Don't start respecting your health when sickness comes. We can take control of that right now. So that is a bit about how I got into natural health. Thank you so much for that. I I can see that there is a lot we can we are going to talk about here. Were you born in the UK or you came there at a point? Help me understand that. I was born in Trinidad. I'm a 1950s baby. I was born in Trinidad and I came to the UK in 1965 at nearly nine years. 11 months old. So I have been back several times, but not recently. Um, The last time would have been four or five years ago that I was in Trinidad. Yes. So the majority of my schooling was done here. All right. Let's talk a bit about that. So you grew up uh, where? Which part of the UK did you grow up? Help me understand uh, you growing up now as a young adolescent in the UK. We are particularly interested in that. As you can see, everyone has a story to share. So, of course, uh, we are here to listen to your story so we can learn from it. Mm -hmm. So, my sister and I came to the UK in November 1965. We were two little urchins. I was nine years, 11 months, coming to a from a warm climate, as you can imagine, in winter coming to the UK. Very cold. So, my mum met us with... um, warm clothing and coats so we could put on straight off the aircraft because my sister and I traveled on our own. Mom had already been here. Um, It was very interesting growing up um, in the UK, our first experience of going to a UK school. My sister and I were, as you can imagine, back in the 60s, were in the minority in the school that we were in. Um, We lived in edge there for a while. Harrow, South Harrow, where my mum still resides. I have moved around lots and lots of different places since I've been living in the UK. And I constant, con, um, I now reside in Wolverhampton in the West Midlands. So yes, growing up in school was a different story. Going to church was a different story. It was an experience. And as I said, we were in a minority in our school in terms of uh, ethnicity. When you say different story, going to school and going to church, what do you mean by that? Explain. Well, (laughs) going to church in Trinidad was very different from going to church in the UK, which was very, can I say, stayed? (laughs) Very, um, how would I best describe it? Very formal. Whereas in (laughs) Trinidad as a child, it was freeing. It was freeing. You could be expressive. So 
when I got to an age where I could say to mum, okay, I've been to church, stop sending me. <laughs> she stopped. <laughs> she stopped. <laughs> I was not enjoying it at all. And in fact, I didn't um, start going to church and I didn't become a Christian until I was 32. Um, when I could make a conscious decision of why I'm going, started looking into the scriptures, understanding and getting to know it's a journey, understanding our father, our Abba Father, our Elohim, it was a journey. And it is still a journey because every day should be a learning day. I have my Bible study daily. And, you know, as I delve more and more into the Father's love, into his protection, into his code of conduct that he's given us with his word. And I call it it's his love letter to us because he just wants the best for us. So, yes, I'm still me. I'm expressive, even though the congregation that I attend is multicultural. It is wonderful because you have the Father's word being preached and unconditional love. It's what it's about. That's that's really interesting. I, I, I love to hear that. All right, what about the school? You also said the school was different. What do you remember of your school days? Ah, the children weren't necessarily kind. As I mentioned, we were in the minority. <laughs> So they weren't necessarily kind. I remember one of the pupils at school once said to me, I love you, honey, but your lips are too big. Now you can imagine he was <laughs> Caucasian. He was white. <laughs> so they weren't too kind. <laughs> but, you know, you grow up with it. And my shoulders are broad from a young age. I was also very independent from a young age. Um, I, what, I, what, did you, what did you respond to, to the person that was telling you that? Uh, it was a shock, actually. <laughs> I think I I just accepted it, what he said. I didn't come back with anything. I just listened. And I thought, hmm, that wasn't very nice. But <laughs> you smile sweetly and let it brush over you. Yes, I was in a youth club one evening after school. And one of the boys there actually spat in my face. Obviously, he wasn't of the same colouring as me. We'll just put it that way. And, you know, I could relate horrible. to a small degree of when when Jesus was falsely accused and they spat in his face. Now, I am not doing a comparison, but I can understand that small element of how that felt. That is really horrible. Yeah. And what happened after that? Did you report the person or did you just let it go? What, what happened? We just left. We left the youth club. That is quite sad. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so bad thing does happen sometimes. Sorry about yeah. that. And while yeah. I was at school, the only fight I got into was with a boy. <laughs> you, you were fighting with the boys? With a, one boy. And I got the cane for that. It was when, you know, corporal punishment at school was allowed. Now, I must say that didn't do me any harm because I changed my behavior after that. So, do you know... Um, I was all in favour, having been a product of someone who changed because they got the cane once. Uh, what do you do now? How do you describe what you do today? Well, OK, what I do today since taking retirement in 2020, 2017, I started in the natural health with network marketing, natural health companies. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, in 2020, I got involved in the blockchain. December 2020. And prior to that, in September 2020, I was asked to volunteer as an event host for a community, two online global events. Uh, one is a mixed event with two male and two female speakers. And the other is with four female speakers from around the globe because it's online via Zoom. So the opportunity for the speakers are to share their story their journey, their products or their services, unashamedly. And I've been hearing people's stories since September 2020. I also sourced the speakers and have sourced well over 200 speakers to date for the platform. And we are booked up for the mixed event. I'm taking bookings for, in fact, February's full. So I'm taking bookings for March next year. <laughs> that tells you how popular it is. That's interesting. 
So you you are uh, you are working for um, or within the industry of natural health now. Is that is that what you call it or the event uh, organization? Wh which one is is sort of the the main of your of your job today? Okay, so this is interesting actually because I don't get paid for the volunteer work that I do for Kashulia UK. <laughs> I do it because I'm a people person and I love connecting. That's great. So that brings me joy. Now, the natural, I will always be passionate about natural health because I'm a product of someone who didn't listen to their body. So I will always be passionate and I will always share um, tips and things that help me through my journey. But I'm always on the lookout for other things that we can use naturally to heal. Now, tamarind is one of those that I've been consuming <laughs> because you can get potassium. We can get them here in the UK, obviously, depending on where you shop, but I can get them from Caribbean shops. And started with, I am not fond of pharmaceuticals. Um, that's why I went down the natural health route. And I know this can be a very controversial <laughs> topic. Oh, not at all. We like to talk about thing that people are passionate about. We are talking about your passion, what you love, what you like to do. We are not necessarily here to just agree or disagree. We are here to share your story. So yeah, why not? You don't need to be, you don't need to apologize at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. put it this way. Put it this way. During the pandemic, mm -hmm. I was totally at peace. I can say that hand and heart, my joy level didn't wane because that was something I was not in control of. I worship our father who is in control of all things. So why waste a precious commodity as energy on something that I was not in control of? So for me, and because what I did was online, um, did I have the jib <clears throat> jab? <laughs> The answer is no. <laughs> You'd have had to catch me first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was Ben Johnson on steroids. <laughs> no way, no how. You said something uh, to the effect of, um, of of respecting your health. I don't know if you want to expand about a bit on that, and then we are going to go into uh, natural health, maybe how you approach it and things like that, because I believe that people that are listening to us, they have something to learn from you. Please go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> I am 67, I'll be 68 this year, and I believe life is and should be an adventure. Life is what you make of it to a greater extent, or to a great extent. And respecting, this is the only body I have to live in, so therefore I need to respect it, what I put in it, and what I put into my head. Um, there's a great saying, if I can remember it now, things don't happen to us, they happen through us. So to a large extent, we are responsible for what we allow to infect us. And I mean that from words. I mean that from, you know, people can be unkind, but rather than dwell on it, let it wash over you. Again, when I think back on how much our Yeshua suffered for us, he is my example. I am not perfect by no means, but I'm trying to live according to the parameters that we have been given. Yes, I fall down at times, but I will pick myself up because I cannot afford not to. When I say respect your body, yes. You know, my husband didn't respect his, and that's why as one of seven boys, three with prostate cancer, he is learning now. Sometimes he listens to what I suggest, that he doesn't eat and does eat, sometimes he doesn't. He's in control of his own mind. I cannot control anybody else's mind. Um, 
people who will listen. I will share the things that have worked for me and that have worked well. There is so much out there. You know, God created or Yahweh created plants that we can heal from, fruits and vegetables that we can heal from, but it's knowing what they are and how to apply them rather than buying something picked from the ground and then a chemical added to it so you can patent it. We can do this ourselves without eating all the pesticides that are sprayed onto our food. Thank you for that. Uh, now, how did you get started with uh, natural health? Help me understand that. I mean, how did you get into it? Right. When my husband was diagnosed in 2017, I read some Facebook posts and I know Facebook gets a bad rap. However, it served me well because there was a post from a woman whose husband had been diagnosed with bladder cancer and he was given 18 months to live. Now, what the wife had done and what he had decided was, okay, I'm not going to receive treatment. I'm going to use these 18 months to do everything I've ever wanted to do. The wife, on the other hand, decided to get to work and do all her research. And she put together a dossier, which she shared on Facebook. And this dossier included all the protocols that she had adopted for her husband, but also gave in contact details as well. So I was so blessed to have seen this. And I contacted one of the people who happened to be a holistic coach and explained my husband's diagnosis. He gave me a couple of products that he should be taking. I then got to work. And not just purchasing the products for my husband and myself, even though I wasn't diagnosed with anything, seed-based seed -based nutrition, it showed the benefits. Sometimes the seed is more powerful than the actual flesh of the fruit itself. So that was my first entry into network marketing with this company. And then only after my husband was in hospital following surgery, because his prostate cancer was caught at an early stage, stage two, whereas his younger brother, who was diagnosed at 47, his was caught at stage eight, only goes up to 10 stages. So he had major surgery. Now, when I visited my husband after surgery in hospital, bearing in mind I was still going through this debilitating condition where I'd lost all my energy, I looked at him because during those nine years, while I was going through this debilitating condition, my husband had taken over the things that I would be doing, the cooking, the cleaning, the washing, all those things that I did naturally, I couldn't do anymore. When I was able to go back to work on a phased return, I would go home and go straight to my bed to try and get ready for the next day. Now, when I spoke to this holistic coach, as I looked at my husband in the hospital, I thought, well, you've been looking after me all this time. How on earth am I supposed to run up and down the stairs looking after you when you come home from, us, from hospital? I was aghast. I could not figure out and fathom how on earth I was going to do it. So I spoke to this holistic coach. And for the first time since I contacted him, he told me what I should be using and taking for myself, which is what I then got involved in. Two and a half months after taking this product, I was out of that condition. I would do what had I still had that condition. As I say, I put in more hours now than when I was working full time. <laughs> and joyfully so, joyfully so. So that's Thank what you. got me into natural health. Thank you for that sharing. Now, how do you approach a uh, plant as a remedy for, for your health? 
uh, to, of course, to improve your health. How do you use plant for that? Uh, I don't know if you want to share anything with us. So plants and turmeric, plant parsley is good for clearing the blood, cleaning out the blood. Coriander is also good. Garlic is can be used as, and I know they'll hate me saying this, as an antibiotic. It has antibacterial properties and so does lemon juice. Turmeric reduces inflammation. Um, so during, um, as soon as I get a cold or my husband who suffers with asthma, not to the extent that he used to because he cut out dairy. What does dairy do? It increases inflammation because there's sugar in the milk. So once he cut down on the dairy, cut out eating white sugars and white rice, which also the carbohydrates with the high content of sugar, that helped his asthmatic condition because he had a condition called bronchiexesis, whereby he had to take antibiotics every month or every couple of months. He hasn't touched an antibiotic in, must be coming up to five, six years since he adopted the different eating patterns and cutting out the things that wasn't aiding him. So, you know, colds, when you're getting a cold, also the use of wild, um, wild oil of oregano, which is, can be used for food poisoning. It can be used for, again, I use it first sign of a sniffle, three drops and it is potent you can't you put it on your skin it will burn you so three drops in a cup of uh, herbal tea anything without milk and drink and you can't put it to your nose with the boiling steaming because you'll it'll stop your breath you'll go <gasps> it's that strong but once the steam has dissipated and you drink it it's fine there's just so much out there that when I first started I talked about the tamarind Amazing properties in tamarind, amazing properties. I also have the, um, this is the iTerraCare healing, terahertz gap healing device. And I started with this in November. I think I got mine in December. I got mine in December. And I use it on my husband because even though he had his surgery, they left. Uh, a portion of the cancer behind because they didn't want to remove the nerve so I'm using it on him and you know his his first CT scan is going to be in May uh, unfortunately because of what he does I'm not able to use it every single day um, on him which I would like to but we are using it as often as we can and just see what the CT can, the CT scan actually shows up when he goes to have that um, done in May. So it's brilliant. You wand your water. So in a glass jug, do not use plastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, you wand it like so, hold it over the jug, but not to allow water to get in it. And you drink as much wanded water as possible. And it shows it can separate the blood cells that are clumping together, which naturally happen. You want the meridian point, so first the palms of the hands, then the soles of the feet, then the backbone, but not to use it if you have implants, whether that be on the back or the chest area, if you have breast implants or a heart implant or titanium hip for instance, you don't use it on those areas. But terahertz works with our normal cells and rebalances really those cells. It's an amazing technology and it has been um, approved by the Beijing Institute, China Institute, um, for its efficacy. And Einstein once said, heating the bones can prevent diseases. 
And how does this uh, this instrument work? Can you explain? Can you say something more about that? What are the something about the technicality? How it work? Uh, <laughs> yes, I can. It's bear with me one second. So what it does, the terahertz. Now th this is going to be very technical, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to say it as I should. But let's have a look. <laughs> the terahertz waves vibrate at the same frequency as normal body cells, which is what I mentioned earlier. When terahertz waves penetrate the body tissues, they pass through healthy cells at constant temperature. However, they cause unhealthy cells to vibrate faster, which raise their cellular temperature unusually higher, thus destroying the unhealthy cells in the process. Vibrate at the same frequency as normal body cells, and they penetrate body tissues, passing through the healthy cells at a constant temperature. However, they cause the unhealthy cells to vibrate at a faster pace, which raises their cellular temperature unusually higher, thus destroying these unhealthy cells in the process. And it's used together with quantum technology, which can penetrate deeper and faster. The safety, the device is certified and pat patented for safety and efficacy. Uh, 62 clinical reports done by the Beijing Institute of Science. You know, we have many testimonials and there's a Facebook testimonial group with over 50,000 members who just post testimonials on how it's been helping. So, yes, I am learning every day. I'm learning every day. An hour of therapy is equal to 10 times of acupuncture, 20 times of cupping, 30 times of gua sha, and 40 times of massage. So our health is our wealth. Without <laughs> it, we again. would be nowhere. <laughs> you, can, you can see that again. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Now, you said that when you use this, uh, this tool, uh, you should not use it if you have some implants. Uh, yes. Can you explain why? Because you're using heat. You're using heat um, to radiate the body in a safe way. But that's safe. It's like I have amalgam fillings, which are mercury. I would not use it on my face because having the mercury fillings is dangerous enough in itself the amalgam fillings, but to then add and apply the heat to it is not um, Also, if you have implants in your eyes, not advisable to use it in the eye area. However, if you're suffering with cataracts, you can use it at the back of the head. You do not use it if you have high blood pressure. You do not use it on the head either. So... You know, you can't just pick it up and start wanding. You need to know how and where to use it to get the best results, which is what we, I, would show you how to use. So, yes, indeed. And I should okay. be using it on my shoulder because my shoulder's been pain, paining me. I think when I wand my husband, wanding his back, I have to lift up and down, up and down motion from the nape of the neck to just above the buttock and I think that motion has so when he comes home he will have to wand me <laughs> to ease this uh, discomfort in my shoulder and top of the arm so you you help him and he helps you too that's how you work yes you to a smaller to degree he helps me <laughs> <laughs> I, his need is greater his need is greater so I do more of the helping him and wanding him. I wand myself where I can, but for my shoulder, he will have to do that for me. Yes. All right. Now, what if somebody said that this tool, uh, if it is actually a natural, um, how is it a it's natural medicine? Yeah, yeah. Help, help me, help me understand a, it's that. It's not a medicine. 
It's mm-hmm. not a medicine. It's not natural health. This one comes under health and wellness. It's a device. It's not something you take into your body like a pill or a powder. I do have those uh, which I take myself, like um, one of the natural health uh, products that I use has been proven, scientifically proven, and it's on PubMed, to reduce the signs of aging on a cellular level. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, But also to increase our our glutathione, which is our largest built-in antioxidant by 300%. And to reduce the sight and to reduce oxidative stress. You know, when you bite into an apple, you put it down, it goes brown. That's oxidation. Well, when we hit 20 plus, our bodies start to rust on the inside. That's oxidation. So um, there are lots of things we can take internally to help our body to detoxify. I also use a product which I spray into my mouth. It's colorless, it's odorless, and it's tasteless. But what it does, it traps the toxins in our bodies and passes it through and eliminates it through our urine harmlessly. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. So it's knowing what to use and how to use them. The wand has great benefits externally working into the internal all right. Now, looking at this device and other devices that you might find out there, uh, how do you know which one is actually more natural and which one is uh, more chemical and the one that you will recommend for people on the basis of what do you make your recommendations? Okay. Right. So because the wand has been scientifically, all the studies that they have done and for the wealth of testimonials coming through about not just the efficacy of the wand but also how it's been helping people with bell's palsy their face is now straight again people who have suffered with strokes people who have not been able to walk to open their hands or their knees so you know the testimonials proves that it does what it should be doing. Now, everybody is different. Everybody is different. And some may take longer to heal using the wand than others, depending on how long they've had their situation for. In terms of recommending products that I use that are not chemically based, I use and buy from different companies, not just the ones I'm associated with. So the companies that I use, they it tells you exactly the oils that I use, the soaps that I use, I make sure they do not have the toxic ingredients in there, that they're pure. I have a friend who's just started making all her own, in fact, two friends who make all their own body butters, their soaps, their creams, and you know there's no toxic, harmful chemicals within those i buy organic where i can so you know it's doing your research don't just take my word for it do your research you owe it to yourself i owe it to myself i owe it to my family to find out what i'm putting in my body and getting the best possible products that i can one of the products that i use the green juice it's non-GMO, it's organic, it's pesticide free and the manufacturers make sure that their fields and their crops are miles and miles and miles away from any other farmers fields and crops to stop cross pollination of fertilizers going into their products. Thank you for that. Uh, You said something that I think a lot of people will be highly interested in which is uh, anti-AG, something like that. I know there will be a lot of argument around that. And I think it would be very I- important to explore. Of course, I'm still looking for a way to explore it because even in my culture, that is something that relates to that. Uh, so I will really explore it uh, uh, at, at, the, at the right time. I'm still looking for the right person to explain that part to me. But the question is, 
Are there medicine or treatment for anti-aging? What does it even mean? Help me understand that. <laughs> well, we know we age. It's a natural. It's a natural. We do age. However, we can slow down the aging process by what we use, by the foods that we eat. Some foods will increase and speed up the process. Um, for me, I found a product that, and it, the product that I mentioned, even though I didn't mention it by name, is scientifically backed, and it's on PubMed scientifically backed to reduce the signs of aging on a cellular level from the inside. However, I go the whole hog and I use their other products as well. So their facial wash, their face moisturizer um, as well. So yes, um, and people are always amazed when I say how old I am or how young I am, because age is just a state of mind. <laughs> you know, how we dress, how we act will to a larger extent determine how people see you and what age group they will put you in. If I knew we were going to be on camera, I would have actually combed my hair, my afro out. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the things that ages us prematurely can be stress. Um, not drinking sufficient water. And when I say water, I'm talking about clean water, not water from your tap, which contains a lot of contaminants. Um, living in the UK, Seven Trent is my utility provider for my water supply. And I remember giving a talk um, because I am also a public speaker. On this talk, I, in preparation for it, I asked the utility to send me, under the Freedom of Information Act, the contents of my water. I had a six-page spreadsheet with all the contaminants, including glyphosate, which is a weed killer, which leaks into the watercourse, arsenic, mercury, of course, you've got antibiotics, you've got a whole load of cadmium, chromium. All these are poisonous to our health. Do I drink tap water? Not on your Nelly. However, because our body is our largest organ, I shower with that disgusting water until I can find something that's cost effective where I can at attach to my shower. So the water is filtered, but drinking unfiltered water, and I don't mean, um, you know, you can get the kettle filters. I don't mean one of those. That doesn't remove the fluoride, the chromium, the um, all the other things that you get in the water. Uh, you need something like a distiller or a Berkey or a Kangen machine to remove those things. So we need to be careful, as I say, what we put into our body, which will have an effect on the aging process too. Everyone's responsible to do their research in finding out what can aid them in terms of natural health, the type of foods that you can eat that will benefit your immune system, will benefit you, the foods that are not helpful and can damage your immune system. We have to take responsibility for finding out what aids us. Anyone is welcome to connect with me. I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on Facebook. Um, so, yeah, it's our responsibility. Sometimes I have been asked to give talks about health. Again, do some research. Yes, yes. So thank you so much. I appreciate the time. If you enjoy this podcast, make sure you subscribe so you never miss any of our future episodes. Rate and review Obehead podcast and share with your friends who might need it. I remain Obehead A14. Thank you so much for listening and talk to you in the next episode.